We're Danny and Kate, and this is Paco. We recently bought 12 acres of land in the Spanish mountains. Follow the journey as two DIY novices with tons of enthusiasm, but not quite as much know-how. Renovate a small stone barn into the tiny house of our dreams and bring the land back into full production. But first, before we rip the roof off our brand new home, we need somewhere to stay. Welcome to the Cabin Build series. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode at Smithsdale Farm. We managed to get off from Barcelona a little bit earlier than usual this week, so we're hoping to get a little extra time on the land. Since there's going to be another hour or two of sun, we're gonna try and make the most of that by creating a little bit of shade ready for tomorrow, because it's forecast to be 36 degrees. One, two, three, four. I am not a raincoat here to keep you warm Then go back in the closet after the storm I'm not a match simply waiting to burn All I am is a friend, your friend till the end Your impression of a city wish You loved more than everything you gave for it And I'm not here to criticize the risk All I am is a friend, your friend till the end All I am is a friend, your friend till the end We're going to start the day by tackling the next couple of panels on the roof so i'm going to be going up there kind of leaning on the support bars where we've got the i-beams or where we've got the um, pieces of wood going across and try and spread my weight as best as possible it seems pretty secure up there but we just want to kind of take the safest route um, and we're going to try and get a couple of panels up before it gets too hot for this afternoon then we'll take a break and then come back to it putting on the roof yesterday it wasn't kind of really hot and sunny or anything but because we're on the metal it was a bit slippy because if my knees were getting a bit kind of sweaty or something then I was just like slipping on the metal so today I'm gonna try and um, make some little like knee pads <laughs> and see if that helps um, makeshift because it's using what we've got so I've got an old pair of socks and some gaffer tape and we're gonna see if that does the trick
resourceful in this off-grid life. Well, those little uh, like knee guard, knee protector things actually worked pretty well. They stopped me from slipping on the metal. So, you know, these little hacks, they do work. Uh, <laughs> they're not sexy. They're not very pretty, but they function pretty well. So that's the main thing. Well, the, uh, the little screens of, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> we stopped because she's burning herself on the roof. So we'll um, carry on after the midday. So probably about seven o'clock this evening. Uh, the temperature will go down and hopefully the, the metal on the roof will be cold enough that we can get back up there and carry on. But we've got a good few panels on and we're happy with the progress. When you're working hard, you just need to take a little break sometimes. So this lunchtime, we've decided to come down to the Cami de Esud, which is basically the Weir, which is close to us on the River Ebro. I don't know what I'm meant to feel anymore. Take it out of my girls and smash that door I fucked around with myself and I let you know That if you're up there watching, start the show Say it's over my friend how long until the end? Cause I'm past the point where I can amend I don't love myself but I can pretend Repeated cycles in my head bring me down And I've been itching at the back of my head the crown If I remain or inside my head, it's one of the two Cause this head is controlling me, and me it's just you Say it's over my friend, how long until the end? Cause I'm past the point where I can I don't love myself, but I can pretend So after a nice little relax by the weir, we're getting back on with the last full size panel that we have just here. Uh, so we've got to put a couple more of the um, kind of screws, rivets, what are they? Roof screws. Roof yeah. screws. <laughs> we're getting on with putting the last roof screws in. Um, and then the last piece on this edge here, we need to cut down to size. So we're going to kind of tackle this piece first, get that all sorted and then do that final piece. Coffee's finished and it's time to get on with a little bit more of the cabin build. You might notice that I'm stood under this shady area with a little bit of mottled light. I'll explain a little bit later what we've been doing to summer proof the house and make it a little bit more comfortable. Okay, so we're going to do a bit of a, a test with the jigsaw. Um, so we've gone and bought a metal piece and the idea is to use this instead of um, a grinder because the grinder works by heating the metal up and basically cutting through it and it creates a lot of sparks and um, with the fire ban in the summer we don't want to do that so this is more of a like a, a cutting action and shouldn't create any sparks but we're going to do a little test on a piece here 
Um, so this is just a, a spare piece that a friend down the mountain gave us to do some testing on. What we plan to do is then we've marked out the extra distance we need um, on the roof that's missing. And what we'll do is we'll mark that down the panel that we've got left and cut a line all the way down. So we've got the piece of corrugated steel that fits correctly onto the end, onto the end of the building. Um, and that'll be the roof done. Just came in to come get the ear defenders and some rat friend has decided that that would have been a tasty snack. So that's great. Um, that means I think we've only got one pair of ear defenders, which is these ones, which we have for when we're using the still. So, okay. Better put those on our list. that we need uh, 69 centimeters so what we've done is measured out and then found the middle groove which sits kind of at the best measurement of that so it's actually about 69 and a half centimeters and that gives us enough to have kind of one full uh, overlap over the piece that's already there so that should be plenty for us to attach it down So we got the last piece cut and we got it onto the roof. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't get it screwed in. The light's just dying down now. So we wanted to um, get it done in a good way. And in the end, the things aren't lining up as, as, as great as we wanted to um, because we need to have an upwards piece that's positioned over the beam so we can screw into it easily and it be in the right place. So we've got a bit of jiggery <laughs> to do tomorrow, but it will be done tomorrow morning, no problem. So we're off walking Paco now, enjoying a good beer. Celebratory. It's well deserved. This evening will just be a quick beer, some dinner, um, and then off to bed and at it again tomorrow. This morning we've come on our morning walk down to the bottom of the land instead of going kind of up around the top where we usually go because we wanted to come and have a look at what the carob trees look like. All of the carob trees were also cut down at the same time as all of the olive trees were and all of the wood was sold. But we do have a few that seem to be still standing and still kicking out carobs down at the bottom of the land. Maybe they just couldn't be bothered to come all the way down here to get these ones, I don't know. Sometimes the will of nature to survive is really quite incredible. They are looking okay. There's not as many carobs on as there were last year. We need to do a bit of research and see if there's a like on year, off year or something like that maybe. If any of you know uh, about growing carobs, then please leave some information below. But we just wanted to see what things were looking like and they're looking okay. What we have noticed as well is that there are a few trees like this one behind me here, which were cut to the base. And we didn't know whether they were male trees or female trees, whether they were going to fruit or not. But this one actually has quite a lot of carobs on it. These ones that were cut at the base are obviously sending out kind of several shoots the same way that olives do. So we're going to need to do a lot of work to prune them and to find which ones are the kind of viable trunks. But it's actually really good to see that they're starting to put out some carob pods and hopefully we can revive them to be really good trees for the future. Because from the top you can't actually see where these purlings are, we're measuring them from the underneath and then taking that measurement, transferring it onto the top, and then that means that we know where to screw down to. And tell me, honey, will we go far? Listen, baby, don't break my heart. Yeah, that's 
Katie's just putting up the shade cloth so we've not got a um, big bright shiny silver roof on the side of the mountain. Keeps it less shiny um, and should hopefully keep it a little, a little cooler as well. Tired? Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. Finish the roof. Mm. <laughs> it's a very tired celebration. <laughs> you time for a rest? Yeah, coffee. So I thought I'd just tell you about some of the improvements that we've been making to the house to try and make this a little bit more comfortable through the summer whilst we're here. So one of the things we've done is put this uh, kind of mosquito fly screen on the outside of the door. The reason it's on the outside is because there's actually no space to put it on the internal wall um, just because of the way that the door is made. I'll show you the other side in a second. Um, so what we've done is just hung this on the outside. It's just held up at the top. Um, nothing fancy. It means that we can take it down when we leave and it won't be kind of flapping around and breaking. Um, it's not perfect. We definitely need to kind of make some improvements to it. Um, this is just a kind of first go uh, to have something to keep us a little bit um, protected from those kind of flies and mosquitoes. It's working pretty well, um, but we can definitely do something better, I think. Um, but for now, this is good enough. And this is why it's on the outside, not the inside. It's because of the way that the door's been constructed. There's actually no space to have one hanging on the inside because that's where the door fits into. And we like to have this window open for ventilation, but it just creates a massive hole for flies and mosquitoes and everything to get in through. So what we've done is just put a little bit of mosquito net, which is held with some Velcro, which means we can put it up and take it down very, very easily. Having this window open has actually helped a lot to be able to sleep better at night because we do pitch the tent indoors. And it means that if we can have the window open, we can have a bit of ventilation and it's not so hot. The reason that we sleep indoors and not outside is because there's actually nowhere very shady for us to pitch the tent, which means that we just become incredibly hot in there. Um, so we find that in the house is a little bit better, but it still does get really, really warm at night. So having this open is much better. And that little screen just stops us from being bothered by pests. We've also just recently added this shade cloth here as well, which has been a massive improvement because it means that we just get so much more shade on the house. It's just tied with a few simple ropes and carabiners, but it means that we get a big patch of shade which moves around in front of the house as the sun moves. And that just helps to keep a little bit cooler because it stops so much of the sun going onto the door and into the house. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. We really hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Cabin Build series. As always, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below. We love reading all your comments and we try to get back to as many people as we possibly can and answer all the questions that you've got. Remember, we're only sharing our experience. We're not legal professionals, but we do try to give as much information to everyone as we possibly can because we know that there's quite a few of you who are watching who are actually considering doing something very, very similar and buying property in Spain. So ask away and we'll share as much as we possibly can with you all. Thank you again for following our journey and supporting our channel. If you haven't subscribed, you could consider doing so. And if you liked this video today, then please give it a big thumbs up. We'll leave it here for this time and we'll see you on the next one. 